restrictions. I'm moving forward to the next presentation. Ms. Ina, are you available? Yes, yes. <laughs> okay, ma'am, you can start your presentation. Uh, okay, let's try one more time. Okay, so do you hear me well? Do you see me well? Yeah? Yes, yes, Please yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much for this second chance. So no, no. Uh, I would better start from the very beginning. Uh, let me first of all share how we'll spend these 20 minutes together. Hard Russian market in simple words. So at the beginning, I would like to give you the best possible understanding of the reasons standing behind the growth of Russian CPP market. What are its drivers, perspectives, why it shows stable, positive dynamic? All these questions will be covered. After that, we'll discuss the main trends taking place in 2020. What legislation changes happened and their influence market indexes. Also, we'll uh, highlight some really significant construction projects taking place in Russia by multinational companies and local manufacturers. And I will um, uh, take a risk to open a curtain for a while and give you my personal prediction on possible shifts that may uh, happen in the industry. And the third part of my speech, I'll present you four possible strategies how to launch your own CPP business in Russia how to start, necessary points to keep your highest attention on, and uh, we will also discuss briefly their registration process, as it's always a crucial point for international companies. And I will leave four or five minutes for QA session, as um, I would like to give you some feedback on questions that may worry you about Russian market. So please stay online till the very end. There will be plenty of valuable information that you won't find in any international magazine or website. So let's get started. Uh, it's not a secret for everybody who is keeping its attention on Russian market that its annual growth rate reaches the point of 6%, sometimes even 10% per year in comparison with world market rate to 3%. Uh, there is a mistaken opinion stating that the reason of it is acreage growth. As you clearly see from the diagram presented, it remained almost unchanged recent six years. The data is taken from the official Russian Statistical Bureau website. Uh, among uh, um, the key cereal crops for spring and winter, uh, for, for, for cereal crops are spring and winter wheat and barley. Among oil seed ones, we can find sunflower and soybeans. And right now, I'm kindly asking you to study the consumption level of uh, pesticides for the same period of time. Data uh, for 2020 is a uh, predicted level as uh, final index is still calculated at present moment. So this volume is made by three significant groups of market players, multinational companies, local manufacturers, and generic companies. Uh, we'll talk about them in details a little bit later. So what's the reason of such an enormous growth? Actually, it's very simple, even prosaic. Governmental policy. On 7th of May 2018, uh, Russian President Mr. Vladimir Putin has signed uh, an order stating the main national goals and strategic plans necessary for uh, development of Russian economy uh, up to the 2024. Um, unfortunately, constant sanctions from EU and USA created a crucial necessity for increasing exactly export volume uh, in order to keep economy stable. Special attention was devoted exactly to agricultural sector, whose export rate by the end of 2024 should reach the level of $45 billion. Such initiative resulted in the real boost in the crop protection industry uh, because of following reasons. Farmers firstly started to search and apply for more modern, let's call them sophisticated crop care technologies. If in 2018, the rate described in the applied pesticides uh, quantity per hectare in Russia was in two times lower in comparison with USA and in three times lower if to compare with uh, European Union, by the end of 2020, it increased by almost a half. 
Second reason is financial governmental support. Uh, you know, normally the purchase scheme of farmers look in this way. First, they uh, buy uh, seeds, then reserve money for fuel, then fertilizers purchase start. And on the, on the fourth point, unfortunately, we find pesticides. Uh, sadly, sometimes and even more often being limited in working capital, uh, farmers neglect exactly pesticides necessity in their production process. Uh, governmental target credit programs with 5% annual interest rate, and believe me, that's extremely low for our country, helps to solve this problem and to bring more yields to farmers as final result. On the next slide, uh, our next slide clearly represents that at this stage, Russian market is not enough saturated and all these great uh, spa gray spaces uh, on diagrams are sales possibilities as for current uh, marketplace, as for newcomers. Uh, the most attractive from the point of view of total acreage, uh, central Russian regions consume only two thirds of maximum possible at this stage volume. Uh, the example is given based on herbicides application for spring wheat, but believe me, frankly speaking, the situation with other chemical groups, uh, agrochemical groups and crops are plus minus the same with slight fluctuations. Why we decided to choose herbicides? Because in total CPP consumption, they occupy from 60 to 67 percent uh, from year to year. And here, just for your reference, I decided to list top 10 herbicide formulations for wheat then, and their shares in total group consumption. Uh, certainly leading positions belong to 2.4 D acid plus flarsolam and phenoxapropyethyl plus antidote. Half of the field sprayed are protected exactly with these formulations. Uh, frankly speaking, in recent years there is a trend in Russia for application exactly mixtures as they show much better field efficiency in comparison with single active ingredient pesticides. However, the, the last are also successfully applied and here everything depends on the financial possibilities and the goals your client is setting up in front of him. So, but what are other trends? Yes, of this so challenging 2020. Uh, at present moment, Russia is considered to be one of the most rapidly growing CPP markets in the world. Mentioned before, three main market player groups divide shares in the following way. Local manufacturers represented by August, Sholkova, Agroexpert Group, Listera Factory and others occupy 48%. Uh, for multinational companies this year and the year before, they were, uh, uh, were pretty hot. Uh, uh, in the list of multinational companies, we can list Bayer, Syngenta, Basf and uh, all these industry giants. Why it was hard? Because uh, their market presence uh, really weakened in comparison with previous years up to uh, 41%. You can clearly see it from the slide present, uh, from the diagram presented on this slide. The reasons of it I will highlight a little bit later. <clears throat> and generic companies uh, that import already formulations from India and China uh, win their 10-11% from year to year, even though their list is quite long. And I think it's important to mention that, uh, mention that in Russian market is still kept decent competition as uh, between all group market group, group players. By the end of 2018, uh, market uh, was valued uh, in $2.4 billion. According to the data published by Statistical Bureau, first four months of 2020, uh, we uh, fixed a record uh, increase in pesticides production within Russia. The herbicides manufacturing during uh, these months is increased by 55.4% up to 38.1 thousand tons and of fungicides by 3.2% up to 10.6 thousand tons. And there are a couple of reasons for such a trend. Firstly, it's 
early spring. Secondly, a lot of farmers doubted in in time future supplies because of pandemic COVID-19 and placed orders for future use. And finally, understanding that pesticides price is very sensitive to exchange rate. In April, unfortunately, the Russian rubble devaluated for more than 25%. Final consumers were doing their best to purchase as many CPP as possible by let's call them old prices. So, however, still one crucial important question uh, remains not replied. Why volumes manufactured locally or manufactured by tolling increase overtaking import volumes first during all market history in 2018? And why last represent negative trend? Anti-dumping import fees. Uh, the Union of Local Manufacturers uh, initiated an investigation against multinational companies in the end of 2017, assuming that the price of EU origin herbicides is artificially lowered and such situation really hurts the, industry, the local industry. All that led to the creation of special uh, import tariffs, let's call them this way. Uh, they vary depending on company. For example, Syngenta and Bayer, they sign special obligations uh, not to reduce their price for herbicides lower than definite level. But frankly speaking, such, uh, such situation also influenced a lot some generic companies. For instance, uh, such market player as Zemlekov Crop Protection LTD, whose European agrochemicals are extremely popular in Russia, faced really overwhelming additional 52% import fees. And that's for sure really weakened its market positions. This tariff measure is temporary, but with more than 90% possibility, we think that it will be prolonged for another five or 10 years. We'll see. Uh, as for the other legislation amendments uh, that influence the industry, I would like to mention uh, Ministry of Agriculture recommendations as for import of pesticides, uh, ready formulations, not to see, only through definite custom points. Even though it's still not obligatory in Russia, practice shows that winter, with time such, uh, let's call them uh, more advices, can become duties of importing companies. Clearing process at such points will be much more complicated, uh, strict care require an additional time and sometimes even additional payments from container. Uh, random laboratory testings will become a standard procedure, even though right now it happens really rare. And the last, oh, I'm sorry, uh, I should return to this, yeah. Uh, and the last but not the least is uh, renewing of uh, Rossilhosnadzor powers in herbicide in pesticides industry. This governmental structure, yeah, very difficult to name, uh, lost them in 2018. And uh, since that moment, the amount of counterfeit pesticides in our country increased enormously. Uh, summer 2019 was a starting point for this process when it was fixed the record level of bees death rate. Uh, as this legislation changes happen just before New Year holidays, uh, at present moment hard to describe the differences uh, stating definite facts. But there is no doubt that warehouse verifications will be uh, become a normal procedure, that regulations for CPP transportation will become much stricter. But in a positive sinker way, it may clear market and only decent companies will perform. Uh, you know, as new rules uh, always create new possibilities, just as it happened uh, with the companies from our next slide. Yeah, anti-dumping uh, tariffs were hurtful for many market players, but they initiated a real boost in construction of uh, local formulation factories. And here I would like to mention three really significant projects taking place in Lipinsk, a uh, special economic zone of Russian Federation. A uh, group of companies, Shans, initiated their uh, construction works in 2017. And last autumn, there was a solemn opening ceremony. According to the data published by uh, Shans Top Management, uh, this factory will be able to cover 30% of 
total Russian consumption volume. Uh, second position belongs to uh, Syngenta Group. Uh, second position by the amount of investment investment uh, investments in the construction. Uh, this is the classic example of how company faced bad times uh, caused by increased import fees and found new possibilities. Uh, at this moment, factory is still in construction process, but its start is uh, planned for the third quarter of 2021. Uh, mainly herbicides will be manufactured on its production lines. And the third place belongs to Bayer. Uh, frankly speaking, the details of this project are still kept in secret. The only information available is that industry experts estimate necessary minimal investment in 1 billion rubles in order to finish it. But it's obvious also that Bayer will put an accent on herbicides production at their new facilities. But what to wait for in 2021? Uh, well, I'd like to go through this slide very fast in order to leave enough time for market entering strategies. Uh, frankly speaking, the possibility of creation import quotas uh, is discussed for a couple of years. The initiator is the same as of import tariffs, local manufacturers union. However, it's crucially important to mention that even in case such quotas will take place, they uh, will mainly relate to the fungicides and insecticides from European Union and USA. Uh, in our opinion, generic companies uh, importing from India and China, they will keep their stable work because Russian manufacturers really depend on raw materials supplied from the above mentioned countries. And uh, for sure, they are worried that they may be hurt, for example, because of counter sanctions for, let's say, ex uh, with export for quotas for TC or something like that. So uh, if you are still online, looks like Russian market uh, can be mentioned in the list of those you'd like to have business activity in. And as everywhere, here starts with registration process. Well, actually first you create product portfolio, yes, and then go with further registrations. Here I did my best to describe you the process in the simplest way. In general, uh, if to start application uh, the right time, you are able to receive registration certificate just in two years and be in time for the spring uh, seasonal sales. Uh, the slide is missing such data as registration costs, as actually it's very individual process and it, this figure depends on so many factors, even on active ingredient you are planning to register. So, uh, but I'd like to pay your attention on the step four. It's very important. In case your factory has GLP proved researches for TC uh, for five batch and six stocks, it may save you up to 30% of registration investments. Uh, well, in case this topic is interesting, I can give more specific uh, information by email request. My contact data will be provided uh, by the end of uh, the, uh, my speech. So we right now become to the cherry on top four possible options to start your own Russian sales. Uh, first and the less riskiest way is making agreement with already existing registration owner uh, to use their registration certificates by royalty scheme. Uh, yes, uh, probably some of you may know that such possibility was restricted by Ministry of Agriculture in August 2017, but recent uh, legislation changes in custom law made uh, it alive again. Uh, frankly speaking, to all our clients, we suggest first year to try exactly this scheme, and I will explain why. It can help you to uh, have better market feeling, to understand uh, whether your expectations are similar to the realities you may face here, and then to launch your registration process. Uh, for sure, we provide support in searching for registration owners and your negotiation process with them. Uh, second option is getting your registration uh, certificate, your own certificate, and making general imports, yes, just the same your current clients do. 
uh, there is nothing to be afraid of. Actually, the process is very simple and uh, uh, the, the, on, the most important for it to be done the right way. Here is crucial, important, uh, I'm paying you highest attention on to get registration certificate for your abroad company. Let's say head office in China or India or USA or any other country. In case your priorities or plans for Russia will change, you can always offer your registration for royalty, even though uh, Ministry of Agriculture will restrict this possibility one more time. And believe me, there will be plenty of companies interested in such an offer in the market. Plus, you will keep on selling your formulations and making money. Taking this option, in my personal opinion, uh, you will win in every scenario. Uh, for those companies who, are, uh, after my speech, are really worried about all these import quotas or overwhelming uh, custom payments, uh, we suggest a talent option. It will be the best for you. Uh, in simple words, yeah, you make an agreement with the owner of uh, manufacturing facilities, import TC uh, and other raw materials <clears throat> with, uh, without any quotas, without only paying 20% VAT, and produce final pesticides by your unique receipt here within Russia. Here, uh, you will also be required to receive, uh, to have a registration certificate. Actually, <clears throat> I'm sorry. Actually, our best advice, based on practice for years, is to combine option two and option three. During the registration process, to add to your dossier information about uh, Russian manufacturing facilities. Uh, it will give you an option to choose for every single ingredient what's more cost efficient for you. Uh, either formulate at your own plant or to import raw materials to Russia and manufacture here. And fourth option, uh, it's uh, following uh, Syngenta's uh, example and construction of your own manufacturer's facilities, manufacturing facilities. However, uh, for sure, this option requires really enormous investments. So, looks like I have still a couple of minutes, uh, and if after all this uh, information you still doubt uh, the necessity, at least to try direct sales in Russian market, please check the next slide. Last year, uh, all world pesticide industry was experiencing huge merges and acquisitions, and such a trend will keep on going on. At this stage, standard supply chain is looking this way. Uh, and every single element in our case company is adding additional value to the final cost of pesticides for end users, farmers. And in any case, I don't want my idea to sound impolite, but the weakest position possess exactly importing company. With world becoming more and more globalized, uh, local distributors are starting to receive their own registration certificates and to search for direct contacts with manufacturers and uh, Chinese or Indian factories in the tightening competitions are trying to search for other ways to keep their profit at the same level or even to increase it. Uh, it's important to say that in this scheme, the place of local distributor uh, for a newcomer will be hard to occupy because of following reasons. First of all, the local distributors, they play the key role in the logistic process, possess warm relationships with final consumers, and here Russian mentality makes a great impact. Uh, also, they provide after-sales support that is actually really costly because of significant uh, salary expenses on their teams. So, the most likely scenario is following. Uh, actually, such a process is already taking place in Latin America uh, countries and its progress in Russia, it's just the question of a couple of years. So, <laughs> I'd better to finish my presentation here. Thank you for your attention. Uh, if I didn't cover some topics you're interested, I'm kindly asking you to send me an email inquiry. My contact data is provided on this uh, slide. And also, if you're interested in Russian market trends, I'm informing you that a couple of uh, uh, weeks ago, we uh, created our Instagram account to share you, uh, with you the hottest news of the industry. So you're heartedly welcome to follow it. 
Um, if there are questions, I will be pleased to reply them. Thank you. Excellent presentation, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Yes. Giving us insight on facts behind the increase in market crop protection product market and entering into the Russian market strategy, including export target of $45 billion by 2024. Thank you, ma'am, for highlighting the registration processes and the business strategy of Russia. It's an excellent presentation, always something new to learn, very clear knowledge-oriented presentation. Uh, delegates, we can, uh, we can take two questions from participants to maintain our time schedule. So delegates, please share your name and company details before asking the questions. Delegates, please. Ma'am, your first question is there. Should I read or it is there? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. I'm, I, I'm, I'm already reading questions. Please let me know uh, for the information of Enter rocks. I think this question is related to the uh, presentation of uh, Mr. Anthony. Because uh, oh. Enter rocks, I, uh, it probably is. it's about Solway. Uh, here I see uh, data generated outside yeah. Russia acceptable for registration in Russia. Yeah, okay. that's what I said. Yes. Uh, if it's a uh, GLP approved uh, dossier, yeah, you can add this information to a dossier and it will really save you a lot of money while registration process. That's true. So uh, next question is there also, ma'am. This is an intergovernmental Russian USA policy to shield Indian Russian market from sanctions from USA. Uh, is there any intergovernment Russia is to shield India and entrance Russia? Uh, I don't understand actually about what sanctions you are uh, talking about. Uh, like, um, well, um, probably uh, I didn't understand your question and if possible just send me an email I will go in details uh, with this uh, um, issue and will reply you as okay. for entrance of e as for entrance of Indian yeah manufacturers frankly speaking already uh, at our market we have one representative it's a uh, Berlin company uh, Par Parijat Industries factory they have their own registrations and they successfully import already for four or five years to Russia and as far as I know they don't face any significant problems uh, while import process or distribution process within uh, our country so um, frankly speaking don't understand what sanctions uh, you're talking about okay thank you ma'am thank you for the excellent presentation uh, delegates now we move to the last presentation of the day which is interesting on biopesticide market 